Hi, I'm Sergio Perez from Red Bull Racing, and today it's been my first day in a Red Bull car. The no first lap ever, cool. Oh, this is a dream come true. Never imagined that this would ever happen. It feels so different as well. I can already see so many things to get you, but I'm very optimistic and so much looking forward to race with a top team and fight for the championship. That's the ultimate target. Uh, a windy cold Silverstone, but it's always yeah, a windy it's, cold it's Silverstone. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was it driving the Red Bull for the very first time? Oh, it is uh, one of those days that uh, I feel very special, you know, first day working with the team. Everything is new for me, although it's still a Formula 1 car, it's just so new and, and uh, yeah, just uh, was fantastic. You have such an energy, such a sort of light in your eyes and, and a joy about you. Is that how you feel? I'm uh, in a good stage in, in my career, in my life and uh, yeah, I just want to, to enjoy, you know, uh, whatever happens, I just want to, to make the most of it and enjoy it as much as possible. So, three big predictions for me this season. I think number one for me is the Stappen title. I'm putting it out there now. Uh, number two, the new teammates at McLaren, Ricardo and Norris. I think Norris outscores Daniel Ricardo this season. And I think number three, Russell to score his first point for Williams in Formula One. There's a lot of things I have taken away from it. I think firstly, as a racing driver, you know, one of the rules is that you should never crash with a teammate. And for me personally, obviously Valtteri is in a different car, but I am a Mercedes back driver. I'm in this position because of Mercedes and you know, Lewis and Valtteri are teammates to me of sorts. And I think uh, that is one thing that didn't go through my mind in the heat of the moment. But secondly, as the stewards deemed it, you know, it was a race incident, it was unfortunate, but I was just disappointed in myself with how I reacted afterwards. I felt like that wasn't me, you know, I went against my own instincts to walk away from the incident because I wanted to show a bit of emotion and to be honest my emotions were incredibly high having just crashed at 200 miles an hour. So many things ran through my my mind. Um, it isn't going to change my racing approach when I'm racing against competitors. If I see an opportunity, if I see a gap, I'm going to go, go for it. But definitely I've learned that I need to handle things differently afterwards. I need to really take the full picture in. Yuki, may I offer you a belated welcome to Formula One from everybody here at Channel 4. Uh, are you enjoying it? I, I enjoy especially um, the food in the, in the Formula One. You know, oh, there's always this team, every team has a proper chef. And yeah, we're always looking forward to each lunch and the dinner and the breakfast. Every, like, as uh, soon as I finish the session, I go to the restaurant. Straight uh, to the restaurant. Yeah, straight, restaurant and... That's amazing. I really thought you, you were going to say, yes, I'm enjoying driving the most powerful cars in the world. <laughs> but you're straight to catering. A man yeah. after my own heart. All about yeah. that food. Yeah, all about food, I think. The food is, <laughs> for me, food is everything. So. If you're going to be a rookie in F1, then Alpha Tauri is a great place to be. Yeah. I can only assume that the ultimate goal is to get a seat at Red Bull. Oh, of course, I'm in the future. I'll... I want to be a Ford Red Bull driver, but from now I'm really happy that I'm in the Alphatari, especially from first year. Awesome. Especially France, he's a really good guy. Of course he pushed, but he don't make me rush. Just, um, I think uh, for me it really suits well for me, and um, I'm really enjoying working with Alphatari. I'm just focusing now to um, try to get a point as much as possible for the team. And I think also teammate in Pierre Gassi is a really experienced driver and also he's fast. So lovely guy. I think yeah, he's a lovely guy. And um, I think we had a good relationship already. And I think I'm really happy with the racing after this year.
Reading between the lines, it seems to me that when Lewis Hamilton said that the only reason him and Max haven't crashed is because of his amazing evasive maneuvering, that's shots fired. That's the beginning of mind games for me. Yep. The, the, the battle has stepped out of the car, Mark. A couple of little bullets thrown across. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, and he's right. I actually do think he's right because there's been a few first corners this year where Max has absolutely thrown his car at him and Lewis has made those minute adjustments so there hasn't been contact, which is all fine. It's all fair, but it's, it's been pretty hostile between the two of them, which you'd expect and we hope to see more. Yeah. But at some point, the timing won't quite work out and there will be contact and then we'll have some little fireworks. Lights out, and Perez immediately jumps across. Lewis Hamilton's going to get the lead. Lewis Hamilton takes it away, but he lands oh! over, and he's lost it. Hi, boys and girls. Coming here to talk to you about something which is so important to all of us is one of the fastest people on the planet, Sebastian Vettel. <laughs> Hello, girls and boys, thank you very much. We have the Grand Prix coming up, but I think uh, we have a different subject uh, to talk about today. We're going to talk to you about how important the environment is. And Sebastian, this is something that's very close to your heart, about getting particularly people this age to understand that they really are the future. Well, I think uh, close to my heart, but it Really, I think it should be close to all of our, our hearts and uh, it is something that affects all of us. It's uh, the planet we live on and we share together. And looking back, we know what we've done maybe not so well and going forwards, uh, we know what we can do better. Is there a level of guilt when promoting sustainability while using non-renewable sources? Yeah, you are, yeah, yeah, there is. I feel, um, you know, you could say that I'm a hypocrite because I'm doing something opposite to what I'm saying uh, we need to look out for. Um, but I think uh, we will not change people's opinion by forbidding something. So forbidding me to drive the car, um, I think will not have the effect that we like. So I think we, it's up to us to find solutions that we can still keep on doing these things. One unsustainable thing you could um, fix in Formula One racing, what would it be? Well, I think the easiest one to fix would be the calendar. Now we are travelling from one place in the world to the completely other side and back, and we're travelling back and forth. I think that's uh, something we could very, very easily change without changing anything, just uh, having a little bit of a different, different calendar. You're leading the championship by 32 points. I don't know if you know, but that margin, anybody who's had that in the past has never lost the championship. A 32-point lead has always resulted in winning the championship. Yeah, but I, to be honest, I, I don't think... I think the gap is, is a bit bigger than it should have been. I mean, uh, we just had a lot of good races, and um, I, I think in terms of competitiveness, we are closer than the 32 points okay. because... You know, it has been a bit up in touch and we have been ahead uh, for sure in Austria. Our car was really good there, but for example in France, I mean, we won it with two laps to go, so mm. one and a half laps. So it's a bit misleading. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm of course very happy where we are, but I also know there are a few tough tracks coming where I know that Mercedes is, are, they are going to be strong. I mean, they have been strong all season, just not entirely on a street circuit or in yeah. Austria. Are you enjoying this rivalry between you and Lewis Hamilton? Does it get you pumped or is it a distraction? What is it to you? No, well, I think, of course, people always hype it up a bit, but I think it's just really cool that we are able to, to fight in two different cars against each other for, for the championship instead of always one team. Mm. And then you just have a teammate battle. And, uh, you know, Lewis, I think, is one of the best drivers in F1, you know, that F1 in general has ever seen. Mm. Um, and to be able to, to fight against him, it's, it's really nice. And I think you've seen in the fights we've had so far, of course, we, we race really hard, but fair, yeah. I think. Um, and I think that's what everyone wants to see. And that's what I hope, of course, we can do for, for a long time. 
yeah, like I said, I, I really have a lot of respect for, for Lewis and uh, it's great to be able to, to race against him, especially he's in the sport already for, for so long, he has a lot of experience um, and it shows, I mean, he has definitely won the championships on merit, I mean, he always did beat his teammate. Um, I always said, of course, you know, when you put another very good driver in it, they would probably win the championship as well, but not, I think, in, in the same fashion as he has mm. done, because he's just always been super consistent. He stayed out of trouble, and that's also a quality of a world champion. Absolutely. Well, it takes one to know one. I don't know. <laughs>
Michael Schumacher is German, though. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. So how, how is your your father German, but you were from Belgium? Yeah. No, my dad is Dutch. And Michael Schumacher is Dutch. No, no, Michael. No, no, Michael is German. Yeah. And my dad is from Holland. Oh. Michael Schumacher isn't your dad. No, 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 no. Oh. Bloody, I'm making a fool of myself up here, Max. I'm so right. sorry. No, no, it's all right. Oh, so sorry. Bloody hell, Max. I'm so sorry. You're gonna, oh, no, you're gonna right. shout at me. I've gone the bloody wrong way. It's alright. I'm just gonna. I'm so sorry, Max. You must think. Bloody hell. What are you doing, Ray? Come on. You've got a Formula One driver in the back here, and I'm getting lost. This is the last time this is gonna happen. No. Smooth ride, though, Max. You're, yeah, you're right yeah. down the back, nice and smooth. It's so good. Good, good, good. So we're on tour, it's a big campus, so we're not gonna walk, we're not in the business of walking. Oh. So I'll pull some strings, I've got two scooters and a crazy cart. All right, I'll take, cart. I'll, I'll take one for the team. Thank you. My lower back couldn't handle that. Oh. Japs, follow me. <laughs> you all right, buddy? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, do you want me to come? Yeah. Well, come on then, let's get on with it. <laughs> We drive a Grand Prix car, but not a crazy car. Is that flat out? Yeah. Watch the step. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is a bit more like it. Bunny hop. Bunny hop. Oh, no. Boys, What's boys, that? flat battery. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, what are we going to do now? Actually, I've got an idea. We got it, we got it. Traditionally, the last year of a set of rule changes is not the time for the order to suddenly be changed. We saw that, you know, with the, how Red Bull dominated up until what, 14 and then the Mercedes domination. You wouldn't really expect somebody to come up and start challenging what has been the perceived norm. Yeah, I mean, over the last four or five years, we've had you know, circuits that we've been strong at and we've been able to opportunistically take, you know, wins and victories. But I have to say, you know, we owe a great deal to Honda this year as well, who really, in their last year, you know, in Formula One, have really gone for it this year, and they've introduced a, a power unit that is comparable to the Mercedes. So suddenly, we've got the tools to go head-to-head -head with. I think that's what the, the team is absolutely relishing, and, uh, uh, you know, going to a race where you know you've got a chance of winning, it's a very different feeling than knowing that actually we're going to need something special this weekend to get a result. Rivalry represents the essence of sport. The clash between Verstappen and Hamilton has the potential to transcend Formula One. Unlike the great Cold War rivalry between Fischer and Spassky, it isn't political, but it is strategic and it's personal. So rivalries, they're human, they're vivid, and in the sporting context, it's universal. Do you find you have a different approach to the sport now? I mean, 
In what way is Alonso of 2018 different to Alonso of 2021? Well, I think uh, uh, I'm hopefully a better driver uh, with experiences that I had uh, away from F1. Uh, I'm hopefully better as a person as well. Uh, in 2018, uh, I'm sure there were some frustration uh, there. Um, we didn't achieve the championship in Ferrari uh, in five years in red. And that was, let's say, adding pressure. Uh, from yeah. Ferrari, I went to McLaren Honda, new project, just because I felt that in Ferrari was not possible to win uh, the championship and to beat Mercedes. So I had to try something new. So there, there was always some pressure, adding pressure every year. The CEO at Renault, Luca Di Mio, he said recently, and I quote, um, <laughs> he, said, he said, you are the godfather of everybody. What does he mean by that? I think he meant, you know, that uh, from everybody in the team, one of the most experienced guys uh, is the driver now, which is a little bit odd. Normally yeah. we come into Formula One and we have a lot of experienced uh, members in the team that they are telling you the whole uh, races and the whole <laughs> anecdotes of, of things and curiosities of Imola, curiosities of another circuit. Yeah. And I'm probably the guy that I'm telling the team those things, you know. I raced here in Imola 15 years ago and it was raining on Sunday and, uh, you know, it was a crash in the start. So it's the driver that is telling this, uh, these things now. So that's a little bit uh, strange at the moment. You have made your mark taken the chances, made the mistakes, grown as a person, and you've got the rewards for it. You're not just one of the greats. Some say you could be the greatest of all time. You're the champion, the legend. You are unstoppable. And then suddenly, there's him. What's his story? What's his secret? How did he get so good? He started early. All the greats do that. He posted achievements beyond his years. He wasn't afraid of the establishment. He's talented, fearless, and passionate. So you wonder, who is this guy? And then it hits you. He's you because you were once the young talent sticking it to the old guard. You were once the plucky outsider with the devoted dad pushing you on. It all sounds familiar, right? But there's something else. You saw off all the rest. You beat them into submission, but this guy, this guy is different. He won't be intimidated, and you know why? He's not afraid of you. On and off the track, he won't yield. He won't bow down or doff his branded racing cap. The challenge is so intense that even you, the seven-time world champion, have made mistakes. But you're not afraid of him. This is the new challenge, and you, you welcome that. Hunger doesn't fade just because you've tasted glory. So what will this weekend's story be? Are we about to see the growing of a legend or the start of a new one? And 
end I'm broken down I'm turning in my sleep Nothing is ever too steep I'm trying to find my peace Cause I've been feeling up, down, put out, lost count of every sin Just trying to find a new way, true say, real change It's not too late, fight away the darkness A new dawn, new day, well break I'm just holding on to happiness from all the pain I'm something beautiful so much i'm affected by the ripple feeling so low that i can't even see the middle dark days last rays made me feel little trying to find the words like we've been playing with the riddle i know now i've been trying to hold myself looking in the mirror i don't know myself emotions unknown like i own myself head out the window when i'm screaming for help i'm feeling up down put out lost counts of every sin just trying to find a new way to say change it's not too late fight away the darkness a new dawn a new day well break i'm just holding on to happiness from all the pain i'm something beautiful Light on darker days we seize the joy through all the pain we feel the love won't hesitate take every chance that comes our way the little things we appreciate we fight for truth the heavy weight and every when we celebrate we celebrate something beautiful Something beautiful